hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. Alive. He's alive. Alive. Alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Alive forevermore. from the dead dwells in us. Amen.
And then you may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the very first verses in the Bible that I memorized as a little girl was John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. God loved us so much that he gave. You can give without loving somebody, but you cannot love without giving. Love compels you to give of yourself. When Pastor and Ben and I were first dating, every day I wanted to give him something. I wanted to give him a note that said I loved him. I wanted to give him a, a, a piece of candy, something, so that he knew that he was important to me, that I cared about him. I wanted something. I, I just, there was a heart of me that just was like, he needs to know that I love him. So I need something to show that. So whether it was a, a something a nice thing to do or 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 something to give him as you know that was he could hold in his hand or words that spoke about my love, there was just this giving, 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 giving. The same thing for my kids. I wanted them to know that I love them. So I do special things for them. I have kids that have different love languages. So one of them they love gifts. So that's. What I do, I, I get little gifts to, so they know I love them. I have one that, you know, you, you, love language is, is giving them food. So I give them lots of food, lots of. <laughs> and you know what your love language is, whether it's time or, or, or what, whatever it might be. You know, affection, kisses, hugs. You're giving. Those are all things that you're giving. And when God decided to show his love to us. He gave his only son, the thing that was the most precious to him. And that's one of the reasons why 
that we have this part of our worship service where we take the time to show our love to God by giving because he gave when he showed his love to us. So what, whether you're paying your tithes or you're giving an offering to missions or giving an offering so that to further the ministry of this church, know that even though men down here receive it, God receives it. And it's, it's an, a, a love offering to him. It's your heart saying, God, I love you so much. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We take this time in our service, God, to show you how grateful we are for your amazing gift of giving your son. I pray, Lord, that, that each offering will be a true representation of our love for you and that you would receive it. And I pray, Lord, that you'd bless every person that gives. I pray, Lord, that you would double bless them for the offerings that are given today, God, to celebrate your resurrection and their love for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. You may stand as we continue to worship, and if you uh, are ready to give, you can come forward and place your offering in the receptacle at the front.
because of you, Jesus. There's hope for tomorrow. There's victory for today because of you, because you are alive and risen from the grave. We have hope. At the cross the work was finished 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. And thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you, Jesus, because you live. We can live lives full and abundant and free from sin, guilt, and shame. Oh, God, we love you. Jesus, we thank you. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Who's excited to be in church? Amen. And listen, I'm going to tell you something. I hope you're not just excited to be in church today, man. We ought to be excited to be in church every single week. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Welcome this morning to New Beginnings Church. Whether you're in-house, watching online, again, we're on Facebook and YouTube now. Um, thanks to our tech team for just working out some kinks and doing some amazing work over the last couple of weeks to, to get those things figured out. Appreciate them so much for all the work that they do. They're behind the scenes. Nobody looks back there. Nobody recognizes them until there's a glitch. And then everybody's head goes whoosh. And we've trained them all to go like this and duck. But I am thankful for them so much. But here's the other thing, you know, we're called to be the church. And I'll be honest with you, at the end of the day, we're not a TV station, okay? And so sometimes there'll be glitches and stuff like that. But one of the things I, t I tell our tech team is, listen, don't lose your salvation over technical issues. <laughs> Jesus is still on the throne. And so if the stream doesn't work just right, you know, if the sound doesn't, you know, we had a blackout just a few minutes ago here. Some of you thought, you know, like it was like a, a Jesus moment. Like you were worshiping and the room went dark. 
And you're like, it's Good Friday all over again. No, the lights did go out. I don't know why stuff like that happens. It just happens. But it doesn't change who he is. And so I want, to pr- I want you to know that no matter what goes on in your day, no matter what happens, no matter what glitches, no matter what plans kind of don't work out the way you thought they were going to work out. Any planners out there? You know, you like to just plan your day and, you know, minute by minute, moment by moment. And when things don't go right, you just kind of like <gasps> seize up. He's still on the throne. Don't let those moments in life throw you to the point where you start, you know, like I said, losing your testimony. Trust that he's got it under control. I know it didn't work the way you wanted to. It's okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, I'm excited to be in church. I'm telling you. Um, Again, whether you're watching in person, you're in person here, you're watching online, again, we're glad you're here. I want to give a shout out all the way to the Ukraine this morning. Uh, Good morning to Yulia's parents who are watching on YouTube all the way in the Ukraine and others that may be watching wherever you're from. We're glad we can celebrate together this Easter morning. Amen. Man, we sang sang that one song when Pastor Christie hit that one line. I don't know about you. Man, I was like... This is good stuff. And the line was, out of the silence, the roaring lion. Out of the silence, the roaring I'm like, man, that just fits with this year for New Beginnings Church, doesn't it? Right? The righteous are as bold as lions. Those that aren't righteous, they run. They hide. But it says, out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Amen? Amen? And listen, if Jesus declared that, then if you're here today, if you're watching, and you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then you can declare that as well. You need to start claiming the things that are yours. We've got, we've got the King of kings and the Lord of lords seated on the throne at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf. And we live like pauper's kids. Not even like paupers, like pauper's kids. I think that's a step below. Because, you know, back in the day, you know that saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater? You ever hear that saying? Do you know where it came from? Back in the time when baths were not a regular thing. And so they'd have a big tub or tank, and they'd set it out in the kitchen area, the common area of the home, and they'd fill it with hot water, uh, for, for, for the, whether it was the weekly, the monthly, the annual bath, whatever it was. They'd pull out this big tub, fill it with hot water, and the man of the house got to go first. He's worked hard, he, whatever, so the man of the house got to go first. And look, don't message us about, fe- just the way it was, Okay. Relax. So I mean, like, why didn't the woman go first? She'd probably work harder than the man. I, I wasn't there. I'm just telling you how it was. So the man of the house would hop in that tub first, and he'd get his bath. And then the woman of the house, and then the kids from oldest to youngest, sorry, Kira, from oldest to youngest would bathe. And, 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 and listen, those families back then, they were closer to my family than many families today. It wasn't like one kid. It was like kid number one, number two, number three, number four. Because the more kids you had, the more work you could get done around the farm or whatever it was and not have to, really, not have to pay them a salary. You just gave them a roof and you fed them and you said, be thankful. <laughs> so anyway, so that they'd wash everybody and the last one was the baby. That's some dirty water. You could lose a kid in that water. And so the term, don't throw the baby out with the bath water, was make sure you got the kid out before you dump that thing because it was so dirty you couldn't even see them in there. That's how bad it was. So that's why I said being a, a pauper's kid is worse than being a pauper because you, you, were, you were like low, low, low on the, on the totem pole. And some of us live that way. I'm not a pauper's kid. I'm not a pauper. I'm not the king. That's him. But I'm a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. And if, they, if we can sing that song, it says, Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. You know who else the grave doesn't have a claim on? Me. And you. Me. 
and you because of what he did. And we've got to live like that. We've got to talk like that. We've got to pray like that. We've got to do everything we do with that thought in mind. Amen? Amen. All right, let's go. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to pray real quick this morning, and we're going to get into God's word here briefly. I um, want to pray for the Kutries this morning. I want to pray for Joe Donnelly. Uh, there's some others that just have different needs in, the, in our church. Some are, some are physical needs. Some, some need a touch in their physical body. Some are making some big decisions. God answers prayer. King's kids know that. So when you pray, pray with expectation. When you pray, pray the word. When you pray, pray with a, with, with a knowledge that God hears you. Because he does. So let's go to prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, if you got a need this morning, just put it in his hands. Just lay it at his feet. Trust he's hearing you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, God, all over this room, God. Lord, different families, different individuals, God, means different situations, but it's one, it's one God. And as the children of the Most High, as as sons and daughters of God, because of Jesus Christ, we have Christ interceding on our behalf, seated at your right hand, Father. And so we believe, God, that you hear our prayers. And we believe that you work on our behalf. And so, God, we lift up every need to you, God. Move. If it's unsaved loved ones, your word says you're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. God, I pray for household salvation. I pray, Lord God, for for you to use your your church, Lord God, your sons and your daughters as your hands and feet in this world to bring the gospel message to every single man, woman, and child that we have opportunity to connect with. God, I pray right now, Father, for health and healing, God. The word says that you're a healer, Father. The word says that you're a healer. The Bible tells us that that when you went to that cross, you took on the, the chastisement of our sin was upon you. And it also says, God, that by your stripes we are healed. So, God, I pray healing right now. Physical healing. God, I curse COVID. I curse cancer. I curse arthritis. I curse back pain, Father. Right now across this room, I curse joint pain in Jesus' name. God, Lord, migraines, Lord God. I, I, I pray, God, healing of migraines, Father. Lord, if it's got a name, it comes in submission to your name because at the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses. There is no name that's above your name. So we pray healing, God. I pray for the Kutris, for Joe Donnelly, for others. By your spirit, Father, move and minister in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Amen Amen means what? So be it. If you don't think it's real, then don't say amen. You don't do me no favors. I'm I'm okay without you. If you don't believe it, don't don't say amen for my benefit. I have a wife. She'll do that. Oh, by the way, one of those things, you know, you gave me and I appreciate it so much. Headaches. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Who said church should be boring? If they told you that. They didn't know what they were talking about. And I'm not here to do stand-up comedy. I'm here to bring the word of God. But you know what? The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says laughter doeth good like medicine. There's too many churches out there. When church is over, people walked out like they just met with their oncologist and got the worst report ever. That shouldn't be the case. We might come in and feel conviction. But here's the thing about conviction when it's, in, 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 when it's in, in the right way is God doesn't just bring conviction. He brings a hope for the conviction. He doesn't just say, dirty, rotten, terrible sinner. You might feel that way. But he says, I love you. And I sent my son to die for you. And you can have all those feelings of guilt and shame removed. That's why we give altar calls in this church. Every single, I, I want people to walk out free. Not burdened by more guilt and shame. The world gives enough guilt and shame. No matter what you do, you're guilty. You did you're, you're, something wrong. It's a crazy world we live in. No matter what you say, you will offend someone. So I want you to walk out of here. And look, you might be challenged. You might feel convicted. But knowing how much God loves you. A couple of quick announcements as we move on. First of all, I want to say thanks to everybody who came by yesterday uh, for our spring cleaning day and helped us out. Uh, phenomenal. You walked in, if it smelled cleaner, it looked cleaner, the, 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 the mulch is out there, the flowers are out there. Just, just thank you to everyone that came. For those of you that didn't come, don't feel guilty. 
There's another chance coming. I'll tell you when that is. Because somebody said, did we get your list done? I said, <laughs> my list. I only gave you part of the list. There's always stuff to do. If you, if you own a home, how many know you own a home? Like you do something and you just go back and you start doing other stuff. So there's going to be other opportunities for you to come and do so. But thank you to those that did come. Appreciate so much everything that was done. Amen. Thank you for those that, that brought flowers. Sister Ann Votto, thank you for the, the beautiful flowers this morning that, that you provided here. Uh, appreciate that so much. A couple of reminders. Tonight, there's no PM service, okay? Enjoy the day with family. I know this is a day where, where many times families will gather who don't normally gather or get together. You know, moms will tell their kids, I don't see you all year. Just come for Easter. And kids do. So spend the day. Enjoy the day. Um, also this week, uh, because of some, some things going on with us and, and whatnot, uh, prayer will not, there will not be prayer here at the church on Tuesday. You could still pray, okay, wherever you are, but the church will not be open Tuesday for prayer. So let you know about that. Paradigm is meeting on Friday at 7 p.m. Saturday, Paradigm is also going to the Spirit Tour in Ben Salem. If you want to know more about that, uh, you can see Josh. I think we can sign up people late. Um, if we can't, um, just use my name and you know, throw my weight around. The benefit of doing 25 years of youth ministry in this district. Um, we'll get you signed up, but there's still opportunity if you want to do that. And then last but not least, um, April 17th is the, the one-day Man Tour Men's Conference um, in Ben Salem as well. And if any men are interested in going to that, today's the last day for the early bird price. It's $20. That's April 17th. See me after. I'll give you more details. So with that said, if you've got your Bibles, hold them up. We're going to start off with our pledge to the Bible because nothing else matters. If this word is not true, then everything else I'm going to say after this is irrelevant. If we don't take what the Bible says as, 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 as the word of God, infallible and relevant for today, the next Sunday, just stay home. Well, no, don't stay home. Come, but. Um, so let's say it together. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. His words are hidden in my heart. Hidden in my heart. For my benefit first. Listen, as you read God's word, as I read God's word, I don't, I don't read and study God's word to say, hmm, what's, what's, what's going to be a good sermon? No, I read for me. It's got to start here. And oftentimes when by the time I, at least me, I can't speak for any other preacher, by the time I get up and preach, that word that you're hearing is something that's been working in me for a while. It's kind of percolating in there. It's kind of, you know, growing and, and, and God's doing something. So, so that word is, is powerful. It's life changing. Amen? Amen? I'll tell you what. Open your Bibles to Mark chapter 16. We're going to start reading at verse 1. And as we do, as you're finding that, Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 1, reading through verse 6. I'm glad to be back in here this Easter. Last year we were out there, it was cold. Poor Pastor Christy, she played, and when she was done worse, she goes, I can't feel my fingers. I said it before, and I'll say, appreciate so much what so many have done over the last year to allow New Beginnings Church to continue to minister. So many of you, just in different big ways and small ways, thank you for, for just an amazing year of seeing lives transformed by the power of God. So Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 1, just one of the accounts of, of, of that, that Sunday morning. You read each of the Gospels, it, each one has a, a little bit different bit of information. Some people read and say, well, they're all different. How are they, you know, the, the Bible must be wrong because I read this story and they're all different. Listen, if, if, if four of you witnessed a crime, all four of you would give a different account of what you saw from your vantage point, from your background. You know, you interview, you know, someone who might have a police background, and they're going to give an account that is going to reflect their training. You know, if you, if you had someone maybe who was, like Luke, was, was a doctor in the medical field, they're going to look at things a little bit differently. And so as we read those stories, it's not that they're contradictory. or They give different accounts with different information because, first of all, it's different people. 
Second of all, it's, 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 it's two different people. So one of the gospel writers was writing to Jews. The other one was writing to Gentiles more. And so you're going to have a different story. So today we're in Mark chapter 16, and it says this. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of, G- Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased burial spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. And on the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Can you just think, picture them for a moment right there, just thinking like, wow, someone beat us here. Someone beat us here. But we know that's not the case. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, obviously, but the angel said, don't be alarmed. Your version might say, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He isn't here. I'm going to say it again. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Look, this is where his, they laid his body. And you can go on and read more about it. But the thing I want us to focus on this morning is those, those couple of lines. That he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Amen? Now, look, some of you, you're visiting today. Glad you're here again. Some of you are watching the live for the first time. You're like, what's up with this guy? He's got to take the caffeine down a little bit. This is non-caffeinated, okay? I don't know what caffeinated would look like, but I get excited about the fact that he is risen. And I'll say this, if there's ever a pastor, a preacher, a, 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 listen, a Christian who's not excited about that, check him for a pulse um, or something, because this is what it's all about. Look, this is what I've dedicated my, this is what I've dedicated my life to. This is what God has called me to do. So I, I better be excited about it. It's the same thing like if you went to, to a, car mechan- a car salesman and you walked on the lot and he's like, you don't want any of these. <laughs> these are terrible. These are, these, I, I had one once. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a lemon. You, what would you do? <laughs> You're going to go to the guys like, hey, how you doing? Good to have you. Let me show you some beautiful vehicles. You're going to want to talk to that guy. Listen, I want you, when you walk in, I want you to know I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about Jesus. And it's okay for you to get excited about Jesus as well. So today, the, the, the title of my message is One Word. One word, and we can throw that up on the screen. That word is empty. <laughs> empty. Somebody's thinking, wow, that took a lot of creative energy. I don't, it's not about being super creative. Empty. That's the word. That's the word. It really feels like what God's doing through me, with me this year is as I'm, as I'm preaching that God's just saying, give them a word. A word that they can, when they think of that word, they think of all the things that go along with it. We started the year off, what was the word? Bold. And then we moved on to stand. And today the word is empty. Empty. We're talking about lead, the word empty. And, and I'll tell you what, leading up to this Sunday, I did a lot of thinking about what Easter means, obviously. For some, it means bunnies and baskets, right? Right? Anybody this morning start your day with baskets and bunnies? Okay. Um, I didn't get mine, just letting you know. Uh, maybe it's sitting on your counter still. For some people, I'm kidding, don't bring me any chocolate, I'm good. It's a joke. For some, it means ham. I don't know why. After church, if you understand how that started, let me know. No, but I don't know why, like Easter's ham. 
for people. I don't know why. You go to, I went to the store, Giant, yesterday, and I checked out. She's like, do you want 400 points towards a free ham? And I'm like, no. I'll take the gas. For some, it means church. For some people, Easter means church. And for some people, East, it literally means nothing. It's just another day. They're going about their business today. They're, they're doing what they normally do, you know, on us. So for some, it means nothing. And as I was thinking about it, again, that one word keep coming back to me, and that word was empty. Empty. Yeah. Empty. Yeah. Empty. And here's the crazy thing. I saw a video, and it blew my mind. The word empty can be spelled multiple ways. There's empty, Right? Get rid of the P, what does it say? Empty. Get rid of the E, what does it say? Empty. Get rid of the Y, what does it say? Empty. Now all of you are like, what else, what other words can do that? I don't know, but this word is like so unique. Empty. Now, let me say, as I was thinking about it and saying and typing that word so many times over the last couple of weeks, I got to admit, it started looking strange to me. Anybody else have that happen to them? You say a word enough, like multiple times over and over, and all of a sudden, you're like, that's not right. You type it like, that's, that's spelt wrong. You're looking for the little red line under the word. I can't tell you. After a while, I'm like, I'm, I'm typing the word, and I'm like, something's not right. I'm like rechecking my spelling and rechecking my, I'm like, no, that's right. But after I got past that, I pondered the fact that the word empty is a very situation-specific word. Okay, The word empty is very specific to the, can be, excuse me, very specific to situations. Not that the specific meaning changes. In general, the word empty means containing nothing, not filled or occupied. Right? Would everyone fairly agree, for the most part, when you think of empty, that kind of fits your general definition of the word? But the context in which it is used, um, or our point of view, can make it a positive or a negative word, just by context. For example, here's bad context. Empty gas tank. Right? That's bad. Anybody ever run out of gas? Side of the road? Did you jump out and go, hooray, it's on empty? (laughs) No, you said either, you know, if you're married, you blamed your spouse. Uh, If you're single, it was, you blame somebody. If you're a teenager, you blame your parents. But an empty gas tank, that word empty in that context is not a good context. How about an empty bank account? Couple those for you, that word empty with bank account, not not a fun thing. Okay, especially if you've been writing checks on that account. Okay, listen, with technology today, stay on top of things. Here's one. Maybe you don't get, maybe you say, I don't drive. I don't get this gas tank thing. Or maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I, I, don't, I don't have a bank account. You know, my mom, my, my dad, you know, they, they take care of everything. My husband, my wife, you know, maybe there's a guy out there. You know, you got a sugar mama. She takes care of everything for you. It, it, I don't know. But here's one everyone can connect with that's bad. Take the word empty, connect it to three words, toilet paper roll. (laughs) We all get that. Never good. Never good. Remember traveling in Romania, and there weren't empty toilet paper rolls. There were no toilet paper rolls. And we were traveling with a missions team of teenagers, and three of the teenagers went in there. They didn't realize that in the wall, when you first walked in, was one giant roll of toilet paper. And you're supposed to take what you need and go. They didn't realize, the funniest thing I ever heard was three teenage boys in the bathroom going, help, help. And then, they, and then three other boys say, how much? Not paper, how much were they willing to pay for the paper? Here's some good context, good context. And again, some of you are going to say, oh, there could be a bad to that. No, this, I'm talking only the good side of it. An empty laundry basket. That means the laundry's been put away. That's what I mean when I say that's a good, that's a good one. 
you know, an empty laundry basket. In our house, it's always like, where's the laundry baskets? Because my kids think they're extra dressers. <laughs> empty lawn, that's a good thing when the basket's empty. An empty lane on the highway when you're driving. And you can just cruise right on down. You don't have to, you don't have to break, you don't have to weave, you don't have to slow down, just an empty lane on the, some of you are like, yes. It's like, oh. An empty sink, you know? Come home, you know, as a mom or a dad or whatever. Again, this, I'm not trying to be sexist or whatever you hear. To walk in and you know the sink was full and maybe you're thinking, oh, I got to go home and deal with that. And you walk in and the sink is empty. Oh, those are two beautiful words. Yes, yes, yes. So if, 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 if there's someone in your house that does the dishes beside you and you want to bless them today, empty that sink. Empty, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, to the point where, like, you know, Pastor Christy, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, I'll hear noise, and I'm like, what are you doing? She goes, the sink was left with dishes. She'll get up out of bed sometime and, and go and empty the sink because it's just a good feeling, empty sink. Other times, it could be good or bad depending on context, uh, a diff- the context of it. Again, a different context. For example, same thing, an empty inbox at work. That could mean you did everything. Or it's time to brush up your resume because they've stopped giving you work. And, and the pink slip is coming. An empty hospital room. That means someone's been healed and gone home. Or, or sadly, it could also mean that, that, that someone lost the battle that put them there. And that's why that room is empty. An empty chair at the dinner table. That could mean there's room for one more. Or it could mean that someone's not there. An empty house or a clean house, um, excuse me, an empty house can mean a clean house or it can mean a lonely house. You know, I, I never understood that till you know, we started having kids and our kids started getting older and, you know, we have six kids. And, and, and one, you know, right now one's at school in Florida and, and before we had one, uh, we had one who was in school in Florida and Georgia and we had one that was at Valley Forge and, and stuff and and, and even when just one kid was missing, Christy would be like, the house feels empty. I'm like, what, are you crazy? <laughs> are you insane? But I, I joked with her, but I understood what she was saying. Even though we still had five there, one was missing. And so that empty chair was, was a positive, it can be a positive and a negative. This morning, I want to remind you that Good Friday... Easter, Christmas, the Bible, the church, and all that stuff only matters because that tomb was empty. All that stuff only matters because that tomb was empty. Listen, no empty tomb would mean no completion to the story. I don't care how much love was displayed on Good Friday when Jesus gave his life. Did you hear me? He gave his life. They didn't take it from him. They didn't grab him and, 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 and strong arm him. He gave his life for you and for me. And as much love was, as was displayed in that act, it would, be, it, would, it would be empty if it wasn't for what happened on Sunday. The tomb being empty makes all the difference it makes all the difference because there's been a lot of people throughout history who have given their lives for others but whose tombs whose graves were not found empty later on and so they made a great sacrifice of love it ended there And so that's why it's such a big deal that we remember that we celebrate an empty tomb because without it, nothing else matters. Without it, Good Friday is just Friday. Without it, Christmas is just Rudolph and Santa. Without it, the Bible, just toss it out because if that's not true, nothing else matters. Without it, the church is irrelevant. It's wasted time. It's wasted use of land because it would not matter. But it all does matter because that tomb was empty. Like the angel said on that day, amen. Like the angel that said on that day, he isn't here. 
He is risen from the dead. Why were angels always long-winded? The angel could have just said, it's empty. Same effect, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. But that's such a powerful word. Empty. Again, no empty tomb means no completion to the story. And again, no purpose for any of the things that I mentioned. I want to read to you Mark chapter 16, starting at verse 6 and verse 7 again. But I'm going to read it in the message. I don't know if we have the message um, as one of the versions that we have, if you guys can double check that. Uh, I, I can pretty much guarantee nobody here is using the message as their Bible, but your phone app may have it. So it's a little different version. I don't normally preach out of it, but I just love the wording. Do we have that? Uh, Mark 16, verse 6 and 7. Mark 16, verse 6 and 7. I'll wait till they get it up there if we have it. There we go. Thank you, guys, ladies, people. He said, don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, the one they nailed to the cross. He's been raised up. He's no longer, he's here no longer. And this is the sentence. You can see for yourselves that the place is, say it, empty. The place is empty. Now, on your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going on ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there exactly as he said. They show up, and he says, this, 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 it's the same angel, okay, guys? Um, he says, I apologize if I made you think it was a different, he says, the place is empty. And then I love the next, he says, now on your way. Now on your way. You've seen this is empty. You know what? There's nothing to see here. Move on. Get going. Because the fact that this tomb, we can go back to, the, the empty slide, thank you. The fact that this thing is empty means that everything else Jesus said is in effect. Everything else Jesus said is in effect. And you were told what to do. And you're gonna get more marching orders, but they do not include sit here. They don't, they don't include make a shrine here. Do you know what they were constantly wanting to do, these disciples? They constantly wanted to set up a little shrine, a little thing, and stay places. Remember the Mount of Transfiguration? If you don't, go find it, Google it, find it, read the story. I'm not going to read it. In a nutshell, they go up on this mountain with Jesus, and they get a glimpse of, of who he is, of his deity. And the three disciples that went up there with him, they're like, Wow. We should stay here. We can build like little houses for you and for Moses and, and stuff like that. And we should just stay here. And Jesus is like, no. Our job is not to stay up here. Our job is to go. These women, they show up and, and that was the last place they had seen Jesus. And they get there and the angel says, that place is empty. But then he says, don't stay here. Staying here is not the reason that place is empty. That place is empty for a reason. That place is empty because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And because God loved the world, he gave his son. His son gave his life as a sacrifice. He was buried in a tomb and he rose again so that other people could find freedom from sin and from death and from hell and from the grave. Just like that song we sang at the beginning. The roaring lion declared, the grave has no claim on me. That grave was empty so that every person could have that opportunity to say, the grave has no claim on me. The grave has no claim on me. The grave has no claim on me. He says, don't stay here. The exact words in that verse were now on your way. Church, because that tomb is empty, we've got a responsibility as well to not just sit back and wait. So not just hold on till Jesus comes, but we've got to be on our way as well because that's the whole reason Easter took place so that people would know that Jesus is alive 
And we are the voices that proclaim that in this generation. In this generation. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't sit in church and say, that's the path. No, we are called to go and proclaim the tomb is empty. It's empty. It's empty. Listen, they were surprised. They were. They were going about their business like they were going to go find a body. Why would they spend the money? Why would they spend the time? Why would they get up early in the morning and make their way out to this, to this tomb? Because they fully expected to find a corpse, a body, a dead man. That's why they did all that. They didn't fully understand what was happening. We're different. We know the end of the story. We have the benefit of looking back across history and, and reading the, the account of what took place that day, knowing everything that followed. We have to stop living and acting like we're walking to a tomb, like we're, we're, we serve a dead savior, like we serve a dead king. He's not. He's risen because one day a couple of women found the tomb empty. It was empty. Listen, Jesus gave them the heads up. He gave them the heads up. He let them know what was going to happen, but they didn't catch it. Listen, I don't care if you're the dumbest person in this room right now. I don't care if you got the IQ of a rock. God, we know now that he didn't stay there. And he says to them in John chapter 2, verse 18 to 22, he told them he wasn't going to stay dead. They didn't get it. They didn't believe it. They didn't understand it. John chapter 2, verse 18 to 22. But the Jewish leaders demanded, what are you doing? And if, again, context is important in Scripture. And I, I, I'm very careful about using things in context. I don't always read the full narrative, the whole story for the sake of time. But I encourage you to go back and read John chapter 2. Read the whole story that surrounds this segment right here. But it goes on to say, they said to him, what are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us miraculous signs to prove it. They want him, show us who your authority. Why, why are you doing the things you do? All right, Jesus replied. Destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. He said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. And these people were so carnally minded, they didn't get it. They didn't get what he was saying. And, and, and they said, what? What, they exclaimed? It has taken 46 years. Must have been a PennDOT crew. No, just kidding. <laughs> Del dot, NY dot, any state dot. It has taken 46 years to build this temple. They're looking around at this massive building, and they're saying, 40, this, this, this thing was being built before. You. It took longer to build this than you've been alive, Jesus. You're 30-something years old. This was 46 years to build this thing. And you say you're going to rebuild it in three days? They didn't get it. They're looking around, 46 years. And Jesus was talking about the temple that he saw every time he looked at his reflection. Jesus wasn't talking about a building. Jesus was talking about himself. Jesus was talking about himself. It says you can be built in three days, but when Jesus said this temple, see, they, the, 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 the disciples didn't have a Bible to go back and say, what did Jesus say there? But we do. When Jesus said this temple, he meant his own body. His own body. When Jesus said in three days it'll be rebuilt, he wasn't talking about the building. He was saying there's a day coming. There's a day coming where this temple, his body was gonna be beaten, 
When the temple, which was his body, was going to be nailed to a cross, where the temple, which was his body, was going to be marred. But in three days, that temple was going to be rebuilt, restored, better than it was. He was talking about his resurrection. He was talking about what was to come. He was telling them in no uncertain terms, there's coming a day where you're going to put me in a, in a, in a, in a rock, in, in a hole in a rock, and they're going to cover it, and they're going to put guards. But three days later, they're going to come back, and they're going to find that place empty. They're going to find that place empty. And it says, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said. And they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. Church, it's empty. It's empty. And because it's empty, the Bible says the same spirit that raised him from the dead. Remember they showed up and like, who's going to roll away the rock? And when they got there, what had happened? Rock was rolled away. The guards didn't do it. The power of God moved that rock. Whether it's the power of the God manifested through an angel or, or an earthquake, or God moved that thing. And when that rock moved, out came, Jesus came out. As I, as, I, as, I, as, as I said, Jesus declared he wasn't going to stay dead. He told them, I'm not staying there. I'm not staying there. He should have warned the ladies. Ladies, they're going to kill me. They're going to bury me. I know what the practice is. Don't waste your money. Save your money. Don't buy the ointments and the things that you normally use to embalm, because when you get there, I won't be there. He could have reminded them. He didn't. That's okay. But he said, I'm not going to stay there, and he delivered. And because he delivered, here's, here's bring, bringing this in, and we're going to have communion here today. And, and um, I'm excited about communion on Easter Sunday. But because he delivered, because that tomb was empty, something happened that makes a difference in my life and in your life and in the life of everyone that has ever drawn breath since that moment. Number one, because that tomb was empty, we can be empty from the penalty of sin. Because that tomb was empty, you and I can be empty from the penalty of sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because that tomb was empty, because death no longer had a hold on him, because the, ed, the head of the enemy had been crushed, because the victory had been won, we can be empty of the guilt and the shame of sin. Are you excited about that? If he doesn't come out, it's a whole lot more of us miserable. If he doesn't come out, we're all destined for hell. Listen, heaven and hell are real places. Bible says you're going to one or the other. There's no middle road. There's no in between. You can't buy your way out of, out of, out of hell. Indulgences are not a biblical thing. God didn't make them up. You can't get prayed out of hell. Purgatory, not in there. You die. Heaven Heaven, hell, hell, heaven, whichever, up, down, left, right, don't matter to me. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And the way we avoid them is, is, is receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and receiving forgiveness for our sins. We've all sinned. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. But because of an empty tomb, we don't have to, li we don't have to live waiting for hell. We can live looking forward to heaven because Jesus paid the price. Again, the empty tomb means we can be empty of, of the guilt of sin. It means we can be empty of the shame of sin. It means the debt we did not owe is paid. Sometimes, hear me, sometimes you have to get rid of stuff or empty a room, a house or a life to make room for that which is better. It's time to stop holding on to, to stuff because it's just, it's just what's always been. It's time to stop holding on to stuff because you don't know any better. It's time to empty out all the garbage, all the lies people told about you, all the names that you've been called, all the things that you have done that the devil loves to hold over your head. And he says, you know what? God doesn't love you. I'm telling you today, God loved you enough to send his son. And then he followed through. Amen. 
And then he followed through on that by raising him from the dead. So that you don't have to keep holding on to that. Today's the day of change. Today's the day where you can start living a life different than a life you may have been living. Listen, before I received Christ as Savior, I was destined to hell. Why? Because I was a horrible person. No, I never killed anybody. I never, I, I never kicked puppies. I never, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't a horrible person. But I did things that dishonored God and his word. I lied. Don't raise your hand. But if you've ever lied, you're in need of a savior. It's only little white lies. Find me in the Bible where it tells me there's degrees. Sin is sin. Sin is sin. I took things that didn't belong to me. That's called stealing. I've told things about people that weren't true. That's called bearing false witness. That list starts sounding familiar. Some of you are like, wait, there's 10 of those, right? Yes, they're, they're called the commandments. And if we've done, if we've broken one, we're guilty of, of, of breaking the law, we're destined for hell except for Jesus and what he did. Except for Jesus and what he did. So I'm telling you today, it's time to get rid of the stuff. Well, who is it that says it all the time? Was it Dr. Phil? How's that working for you? Is it Dr. Phil that says that? I didn't know when I married Christy that I was marrying a Dr. Phil lookalike. <laughs> if you ever see her dad, he, he's, he doesn't talk like him. He doesn't think like him, but he is. He should be making extra money on the side. But anyway, Dr. Phil asked the question, how's that working for you? And I'm here to say, how's it working for you trying to do things on your own? Today's the day you can be emptied again of guilt. What if people found out what I did? Key there is what you did. Jesus came to make you a new creation. Jesus came to give you a clean slate. The Bible says Jesus came to make you whiter than snow. Whiter than snow. Anybody here ever have a credit card? Do you ever owe money on that credit card? When you pay off that credit card and the balance says zero, can the credit card company come back and say, you still owe us? No, and if they did, you'd say, ha, I paid it. It says zero. I don't owe you anything. Sin is a debt we owe. We owe a debt because of sin. But when Jesus gave his life and came out of that tomb and left it empty, what he said was, I'm paying it. I'm paying the price. I'm paying the debt. Paid in full. And now the devil, when the devil comes and says, hey, 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 remember high school? Remember college? Remember the early years of your marriage? Remember last week? Remember last night? You can walk out of here knowing if you receive the gift of self forgiveness and eternal life and salvation that comes from surrendering your life to Jesus, you can know that God will say, paid in full. <laughs> the account says zero owed. And the devil can come and you just say, look. But it also means living different. It means living different not going to get into it today. Go read Romans chapter 8. Actually, go start at Romans chapter 6. You don't have church tonight. You got time. <laughs> 6, 7, read, read through Romans chapter 8, and it talks about living a life that's changed, living a life that's different. But we can do that because that tomb was left empty. Our debt was paid. Our debt was paid. Our sins were forgiven. Our eternity was transformed. And I'm going to say it one more time, empty can, the, the, the meaning of empty can be based on a viewpoint. And I'm going to tell you this, an empty tomb was good for us and bad for the devil. Amen. An empty tomb means good for us and bad for the devil.
An empty tomb means good for your neighbor and bad for the devil. An empty tomb means good for your kids and bad for the devil. An empty tomb means good for your coworker and bad for the devil. Because the empty tomb means that everything he said he would do, he did to completion. An empty tomb means that death has no hold. An empty tomb means the grave has lost. An empty tomb means that we can have eternal life. An empty tomb means that the same power that raised Christ from the dead can dwell in this temple and empower me to live a life that honors God. Empty. 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 It was empty then and it's empty forever. It's empty forever. We don't have to, listen, it's time to stop stuffing Jesus back in the tomb. It's time to stop stuffing them back in the tomb. Some of us are like, Easter, bring them out. Week after Easter, see you next year. He's like Christmas decorations. Some of us need to be that weird neighbor that leaves the lights up all year round. Be that way with Jesus. I don't care what anybody else, maybe you're the weird neighbor, I apologize. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody thinks. These are staying up. And we've got to live in such a way that we don't care what anybody says. We don't care what anybody thinks. Jesus is out, and I'm not sticking him back in there. He's not going back in. Listen, Easter celebrates what happened and what was settled once and for all. Are we agreed? Okay. So in reality, we all agreed. If you didn't agree and I didn't hear you, it's okay. I won't hold it to you. I won't hold it against you. That's okay. You're entitled to your opinion. So in reality, listen to this. Every Sunday couldn't should be Easter. Because what does Easter celebrate? An empty tomb. A resurrected Savior. The fact that he's not dead anymore. Guess what? That tomb's still empty. Guess what? He's still a resurrected Savior seated at the right hand of the Father. Guess what? He's not dead anymore. And so every Sunday could be Easter because we celebrate again an empty tomb, a risen Savior, and here's the great part, a coming king. A coming king. A coming king. So I'm going to say this. So if you're here and you're visiting with mom or dad or family, but you've got someplace else, if you're a Christian, but you've got someplace else you go to church, be there next week. Be there next week. If you're a Christian and you don't got a place that you call home, be somewhere next week. Because every Sunday we should come together. Not just every Sunday, but that's the corporate time we do this. Every day we should celebrate, but celebrating Jesus should not be this this, this just, oh, it's Easter, let's do it. No, every single week, every single day, celebrating the fact that that tomb is empty. Because he's not going back. He's out, and he's not going back. So I want to encourage you, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, let this Easter be the line in the sand where you make a decision and say, I'm stepping over a line, and the way I live for Jesus is changing starting Easter 2021. Not because someone told you to, because it's what you want. You won't, dis- you won't be disappointed. Not in the least. I have one more verse of scripture, one more portion of scripture I want to read, and we're going to wrap things up here this morning. It's still early. Romans chapter 6, verse 4 to 14. Romans 6, 4 to 14, it says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Because of that, We're different. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Oh, thank God for that. We are no longer slaves to sin. No longer. If you're still a slave to sin, I'm going to tell you right now, your choice. 
Stop looking to the left and to the right. Stop blaming somebody. My mother, my father, the media, the culture, my this, my that. The Bible says that you can be, you don't have to still be a slave to sin. You can be set free. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. Where is he right now? Seated in heaven. If we know Christ is Savior, that's where we're going. Listen, if, if, if they ever tell you when the rapture is going to happen and you're, you have plans to ride in a car with me, you better be ready. <laughs> Especially if I'm driving. Because if, G, if, if Jesus comes, I'm gone. I'm gone. And if you're not ready, forget Jesus take the wheel. He's with me. You better take the wheel. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead because the tomb was empty. And here it is. Here's tying it all together. And he will never die again. Never die again. Never die again. again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. See, there comes a, we have to die to sin. But it's not enough just to die to sin today. The second, the next step of that is we need to begin to live for the glory of God. We need to begin for the glory of God. There's a cheap grace that says, come to an altar, pray a prayer, and then go live any way you want because you've got fire insurance. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It says that we have to live for the glory of God. That means we can't live the way we used to live, do what we used to do. We live different. He goes on to say, so you also should consider yourselves dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Jesus Christ. Do not let sin control the way you live. You have a say. You have a, stop saying it's just the way I am. Stop saying it's just the way my family is. Stop saying you don't know the neighborhood I came from. Stop saying all those things. Jesus is more, if Jesus could beat death, he can't overcome your story. He can, and he wants to. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. You have control over your body. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that's control over a body. Raising a dead body, that's power over a body. Lives in you. It shall empower you. He says, you give, give yourselves, instead, give yourselves completely to God, for you were dead, but now you have new life. Amen. New life. If you've got new life, give, 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 say an amen if you've got new life. Amen. All right. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. God will forgive your sin. He'll give you a clean slate today, a new start. Then it's about living a life that glorifies him from that moment on. Use your whole body, your hands, Remember the little kid song, oh, be careful, little hands, what you do? Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do? Oh, the father up above, he is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do? Anybody remember that song? No, I'm the only one? Okay. No, there's a few of you. But it went on to say, oh, be careful, little feet. Oh, be careful, little eyes. I, I, I love new music. But man, I, we got to bring back some of these, these simple songs that just remind us of things like that. You know, too many, too many of us singing about, yes, Jesus knows we love him, but we got to start changing how we act. So it goes on to say, use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Your hands, your feet, your talents, your brain, your eyes, your, ears, your whole body. Sin is no longer your master. It's no longer your master. 
For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. It's been paid for. Instead, I love this, live under the freedom of God's grace. People all the time say, I can't be a Christian, too many rules. No, it's not rules, it's relationship. There's expectations, but every relationship has expectations. Why do we get mad at God? You know, when I got married to my wife, there was expectations of, a, of things in that relationship. It's the same thing. We go into a relationship with God. There's an expectation of living in relationship with him, and it's not about rules. We get to live under God's grace. God's grace. God's grace that says when we do wrong, God's not up there looking to squash us like a bug. God's looking up, looking down at us and says, hey, I want to help you get victory. I want to help you overcome I want to help you no longer be slave to that. I, don't, I want to help you no longer be bound to that. That's what we get to live under. Why? Because that tomb is empty. So this morning, as, as we wrap up this portion of the service, again, because that tomb is empty, we can have the, the penalty of sin paid for. We can have guilt and shame and all of that removed. But God doesn't just say, let me take. God says, I want to give. Remember I said when you, sometimes you take stuff out, it's good to put stuff in. Scripture even talks about that. But I want you to know that God takes away shame and guilt and the penalty of sin. And you know what some of the things God gives that he wants to fill you with? He doesn't want to leave you empty. See, there's, there's, like I said, there's good times to be empty. And then there's good times to be filled. And good things to be filled with. I want you to know that today God wants to take everything. Guilt, shame, all of it. Anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. God wants to take all of that out. And before everybody thinks, that's all, such, all spirit. No, it's physical things as well. Doctors will tell you that if someone who's bitter and for, for years and years, it'll, it'll physically impact them. It'll cause health issues. Anger will cause health issues. Too much stress will cause physical health issues. And God says, you know what? I'm ready to give, take out a bunch of this stuff, stress and worry and anger and all, and I'm ready to give you love. I'm ready to fill you with love, an agape love. A love that not only shows you how much I love you, but a love that allows you to forgive. Some of you here today, you're still angry at people that are dead. You're still angry at coworkers that you haven't seen in 20 years. They did you wrong. And whenever you get a chance to talk, you, if anyone will listen, you'll tell them the story like it happened yesterday. And God says, time to let unforgiveness go and walk in love. Some of you here today, love, forgiveness. Some of you here today, and God's saying, I want to I wanna fill you with joy. 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 I want to put a smile on your face. Pastor Ben, are you always cracking jokes? No. Do you ever get upset? Yes. Ask my wife, ask my kids. I do, because I'm human. But I don't live there. I'm not just angry and, and sullen all the time. There's a joy that comes, the joy, and it's my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God wants to take out, and he wants to put in. He wants to put peace in you. People running around today. Oh, my goodness. There's so much stuff going on. Are my kids going to go back to school? Am I going to have a job? What's the economy going to be like? Are we going to be able to ever go on vacation? Again? There's so many things that are just sapping people's energy. And God says, I want to give you peace. I want to give you peace. Talked to somebody just recently. They were praying for just God's direction. And God just opened a door that they didn't even realize they wanted open. And now as they look, they're like, man, this is amazing. God does stuff you don't even know he's going to do. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you hope. Listen, in the last year, there's been a lot of hopelessness. I've heard that, that, that and I don't know all the specific statistics. I, some of you are like numbers people. Some of you like, you know, you'll go to the CDC website and you'll read and you'll look. and you. All I know is that through all of this, there's been a, a, a negative impact impact in our country in the area of hope people are suicide rates are up and i don't know if we'll ever know the full extent of some of these numbers 
Um, domestic violence is up. Alcohol and drug use is up. And some of you, you work in, in, in fields and in, in, in industries where you're, you're seeing stuff. All of these things are up. I've got kids. They've got friends. We've had conversations about just kids are just, just will life ever be back to normal? Jesus brings hope. Jesus brings hope. Jesus brings hope. Amen. So as, 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 as we're wrapping up this Easter service this morning, again, uh, next week, I hope you're somewhere. Next week, I hope you're somewhere. A, a church near your home, this church, another church, I don't, be somewhere next week if you believe all of, every, of, the, of the, 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 believe the stuff I said this morning. But this morning, like I said, because of that empty tomb, God wants you to have victory in your life, and he wants to fill you with some amazing stuff. So if you're here today or you're watching online, and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You've been carrying around some serious burdens. And today, you're ready to be set free from those burdens, from unforgiveness, from, from whatever it is. I want you to know that Jesus is ready to meet you, to start a relationship with you. And so if you're in this room or you're watching online, and you've never prayed a prayer and said, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I'm ready to be empty of all the garbage and junk. And I'm ready to be filled with everything your word promises you have. All those things you promised that you would have for, for your children. For those who are called according to your name. If you're here today and say, Pastor Ben, I, I'm ready for a change. Or maybe you're here and, and you prayed that prayer before, but lately, you know what? You've been trading joy for headaches because you've been trying to figure things out on your own. If you're here and you say, Pastor Ben, I want to walk out of here different, empty of the junk and filled with the blessings that God has for me. Would you raise your hand? Is there anyone in this room? Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Is there anyone at all? Just take it a moment. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that says, that's me? I'm ready to let go of the stuff. I'm ready to be emptied of, the, of death and, and, and heartache and pain and be filled with the things God has. Anyone else? If you're watching online and that's you, leave us a comment. We'll follow up with you. But if you raised your hand, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask if you would just come right here to this altar just for a moment. Don't be embarrassed. Come on up. I want to just take a moment and pray with you. So would you please, would you come? I just want to pray with you. Just come right here to this spot up here at the, by the altar. Amen. 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 Just come right over here. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? It doesn't matter first time or you just need to. Amen. Lucille, would you come and pray with this sister? Introduce yourself, pray with her. Hallelujah. This is what it's all about, church. This is what it's all about. Some people will be like, should be more. Heaven's rejoicing right now. Heaven's rejoicing right now. And not, not only heaven, but we should rejoice because when even one returns and, and comes back to Jesus, there should be a celebration. There should be excitement. Amen. Mario, if you would. Amen. Amen. We're going to have communion today. Mario's going to help me out here. Don't he look good? Don't mess with me. Mario's my muscle. <laughs> if you would just set them on either side of the Bible here. As Mario's doing that and they're praying here. No, just get that real quick. No, get that real quick. No, get out of here, man. Go get that. Forget muscle. He's my straight man. As Mario's bringing this up, 
Here at New Beginnings Church, we celebrate family communion. What does that mean? Simply this, if you're a part of the family of God, even if you're not a regular at New Beginnings, we invite you to have communion with us. You don't have to be a member, you don't have to be a regular. The only prerequisite the Bible talks about is, is being a child of God. And if you're a child of God, we, we wanna celebrate communion with you. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask that, we're gonna start over here at this section. And this section, if you would come and come across the front and then go up that side aisle and then back around to your seats, come on up and grab your communion and then hold on to it until everyone's been served and we're gonna partake of communion together. So go ahead. You can start coming. You can start coming. There's two containers, so. And just kind of go around that way because there's a backup behind you. Just go around the room. You've been sitting too long. Stretch your legs. You can go the center aisle. You can go the end aisle. It's fine. But hold on to them until, you're, until everyone again has been served. right now just stay just stay in an attitude in a place of, of praise and worship right now don't get involved in outside discussions don't check your email right now let's just praise God just praise God just begin to say thank you Jesus for that empty tomb thank you Jesus for forgiveness thank you Jesus for newness of life thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus that death no longer has a hold on you Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give an applause again for Nancy and welcome her to the family of God. Hallelujah. 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 The devil's not happy today. The devil's not happy today. The devil's sitting wherever he's sitting right now, and he's saying, we lost another one. And I say, good. There's a lot more that are going to be lost to the kingdom of hell because we're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did everyone in the two middle sections get theirs? All right. This end section, if you would, just come on down. Hallelujah. Again, hold on to them. If you want to open that first layer. Hallelujah. And just hold on to it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Make sure our sound people get what they need. If they didn't get any guys, help each other out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Has everyone been served? Hold on to them. Before we take communion this morning, and we're wrapping things up here. Thank you, Mario. Appreciate your help. I'm good. Thank you. Just have a seat. Yeah, we're good. Thank you so much. Pastor Christie's going to... Pastor Christie is going to sing a special this morning. Because I want, I want us to just remember this day as a watershed moment. As a day where we made a choice, we're going to live different because we were, we were reminded of an empty tomb. So just hold on to your communion. We're going to take it in a moment. Pastor Christie, if you would. Jesus has 
not only did he come up and ascend into heaven, the Bible says that one day we will as well. And what communion does is just reminds us of that work, that body that was beaten, that blood that was shed, but it also reminds us of that tomb that was empty. I don't know when Jesus is coming, but I'm ready. I don't know when Jesus is coming, but I wanna do my part to make sure that, that people are ready. Because he's coming. If that tomb was empty, he told the truth about that. He told the truth about everything else. And he said, I'm coming. Father, thank you for this, this bread that reminds us of your body that was, that was beaten for, for us. And that through it, we can have strength and wholeness and healing in our bodies, Father. Thank you for loving in us enough to give the best you had. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat of the bread together. Bible says on the same night he was betrayed, Jesus took the cup and he said, do this in remembrance of me. That's why we do it, Father, to remember the love and the sacrifice. Your blood shed on a cross, a tomb that was left empty, won the victory over death, hell, and the grave. The price of our sin was paid. God, thank you for those that were added to our family today, to your family today, Father. Thank you for those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Father. Thank you for the blood that is sufficient to wash us and make us whiter than snow. Let us never take it for granted. Let's, let us live lives that honor you in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's drink of the cup together. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. As we close this morning. They'll have a trash can by the back door as you leave for, for your containers. You can throw it out there. But before we leave, I, again, I just, maybe you don't remember anything I said. <laughs> just remember the word empty. Amen. The tomb was empty. Because the tomb is empty, you can be empty of all that junk so he can fill you with everything he has for you. God loves you and he has a plan for your life. Happy Easter, and don't forget, Jesus is risen. Amen. Father, I pray blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you go.